Hi, I'm Dave Whitehead, Vice President of Research and Development at Schweitzer Engineering Laboratories. Welcome to the final part in our video series explaining how to configure the SELT400L. In this video, we're going to look at fault location settings and event reporting. First, let's set the fault locator. We need to configure a triggering for the fault locator. In standalone fault locating application, this can be a mirrored bit or an input contact. In our protection application, we'll just use the trip bit to initiate the fault locating calculations. TWCPT is a setting that compensates for the time it takes for a traveling wave to travel from the CT to the relay. It stands for traveling wave cable propagation time. Use the control cable data or measure the time using time domain reflectometry. You can expect one microsecond of delay for each 500 feet of control cable. This setting improves accuracy of the traveling wave fault locating but only marginally. You can leave it at zero if you're not ready to find the exact value. The mode setting controls if the fault locator uses Clark components or phase components. This setting should be set to Clark unless you configure standalone fault locating applications on underground cables and the cables have individual per phase shields. Now let's look at the sequential event recording settings. Sequential event recording configuration does not affect relay operation, but it is very important for event analysis. You want to have all critical relay word bits recorded so that you can quickly analyze faults for your own organization's benefit and when reporting to your reliability organization. Let's use SER1 to log all tripping events so we can select at least TD21P, TD21G, TW87, TD32F, and TW32F. We may consider adding the starting element, start, and the timeout indication, TD out. Let's use SER2 to record permissive and direct trips received. So we select PT87LA, PT87LB, PT87LC, PTRXA, PTRXB, and PTRXC. Further, we select DTRXA, DTRXB, DTRXC, DT87LA, DT87LB, and DT87LC. Let's use SER3 to record the relay's output. We'll select TRIP, KEY A, KEY B, KEY C, DTTXA, DTTXB, and DTTXC. Any input contact, we should record them. BLK is the blocking input that is always used, so we'll configure it under SER4. The SELT400L provides 10 kilohertz and 1 megahertz recorders for local currents and voltages and remote currents and voltages if the fiber optic channel is in place. All we need to do to use this feature is to set the trigger and decide on the length and trigger position of each record. Let's trigger the recording each time we trip, send a permissive signal, or receive a permissive signal. So we set ER to trip, key A, key B, key C, PTRXA, PTRXB, PTRXC, PT87LA, PT87LB, and PT87LC. If we're not interested in looking at a trip and reclose sequence, you can set the record duration to the lowest range limit of 0.2 seconds. If you want to record trip and fast auto reclose sequences, set the duration to the upper range limit of 1.2 seconds. We'll set the duration to 0.3 seconds. To troubleshoot the relay operations, we need pre-fault data. You should set the pre-fault duration to at least two cycles. For longer records, you may set longer pre-fault. With the 0.3 seconds total record, let's set the pre-fault record to 0.05 seconds. This is our last setting, so let's remember to save our work one more time. And that's it, our SEL T400L relay is now fully configured. The SEL T400L Time Domain Line Protection Relay is simple to use and configure. For more information about this exciting new technology, please visit our website at www.selink.com. Thanks for watching.